Hello everyone and welcome back to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and over on Instagram, and this is episode 21. I'm so excited to be back this week because we have a lot of fun things to talk about first. I have a finished object. Um, so we have a finished object, we have a couple new cast-ons, and I get to share a couple days. Today is Saturday, December 3rd, so I can share with you the first three days of my Twice Your Jeep advent, as well as the first week of my Explore Knits Winter Solstice advent. Um, I actually thought that was a countdown to Christmas. It's a countdown to the winter solstice. So we actually got to open the first yarn on November 30th, which was like really exciting. But um, I'll get to that one a little bit later. Um, let's talk about the clove sweater. That's why you guys are all here. Um, you can see me wearing it. I will post a, a picture here that's gonna be there the whole time I'm talking about this. But I am really, really happy with this to start with. So this is the clove sweater by Rachel Kurihara. She is at Rachel Knits Things on Instagram. And the yarn I use is Explore Knits and Fibers in their Rockies DK base in the colorway Barrel Age Sour. Um, this color, man, I've had this for a while and I knew it would make a beautiful, beautiful sweater. Um, I'm just like really happy about the way that like the colors pool slash don't pool. Um, you can see maybe like a little bit of striping going on. I did alternate skeins in the first, <laughs> like the top half of the garment, and then I stopped. Let's see, you can kind of see like right there. And then there's like a section here that's a little bit lighter and then it gets a little bit darker again. I should have kept going with alternating skeins, but it's like not super noticeable in person, so I'm not upset about it. I've had other like indie dyed yarns that have pooled and striped like much worse, so this I am not worried about. Um, I, ooh, sorry about that, dropped my phone. I knit this size large. Let me see here, I'm going to pull up my notes because if you watched the finished object video for the last sweater I made, which was the clove sweater by Petite Knit, um, and if you've watched any of my past videos, you will know that I'm doing a drop shoulder sweater comparison series. So if you are new here, <laughs> I'm doing a drop shoulder <laughs> sweater comparison series where I am knitting and comparing three drop shoulder sweaters. The first one that I've already finished is the, um, the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. The second one is this one, the Clove sweater by Rachel Kurihara. And the third one that I'm going to make, uh, spoiler alert, is the Dear Duomo sweater by Senghi Knits. And um, if you watch the finished object video from my Oslo sweater, you will know that I like took very detailed notes. I have a list of questions, um, some of which I came up with, some of which I asked Instagram, like what you would want to know if you were like comparing drop shoulder sweaters. Um, and so I have all of these notes on my phone <laughs> that I just wrote out for this. Um, okay, I have a 40 inch bust. So I was debating between knitting the size medium, which is the fourth size in the pattern, and the size large, which is the fifth size in the pattern. The pattern recommends six to ten inches of positive ease, which would put me between uh, 50, or sorry, 46 and 50 inches in the final garment. I which there are patterns, there are, sorry, there are sizes corresponding directly with 46 inches and with 50 inch, 46 inches and 50 inches, okay. I feel like I'm not saying the right things, but I think I am. <laughs> um, and I ultimately chose 
to go with the size large. Um, I was worried that I would not have enough yarn to make the size large, um, which we will talk about at the end. I did, I ended up having enough, um, but we'll kind of talk about what I was left over with um, closer to the end of this description and review. So I ended up going with the size large, which is the size five. Um, and I also ended up being like pretty close to gauge using the recommended needle size, which is a four millimeter needle, which I was surprised by. Um, I did a gauge swatch. I actually did like, I don't have any to show you because I did them and then I ripped them out because I was worried about having enough yarn. But I did these like really tiny like gauge swatches for this, uh, which honestly, I just like don't have any desire to swatch. I have no will to swatch. Swatching is not one of my favorite activities, but I have learned recently and like throughout Throughout making these two sweaters and a couple of the sweaters that I made earlier this year that like swatching is so important if you want your sweater to come out to the measurements that it says in the pattern. So I do it <laughs> begrudgingly. Um, anyways, I knit, I started with a 4.5 millimeter because I was like, surely I'm going to have to go up a needle size. That's like normally what I have to do. And it turned out that it was not correct. So I went down to the four millimeter needle listed, recommended in the pattern, and it worked out great. Um, I think I was, I don't really have any notes about my gauge, which I should have written a note for my gauge swatch but I did not, I didn't. <laughs> but I remember it being like just slightly off and I didn't block my gauge swatch again because I ripped it out um, and I just figured we'd go on with it. And as I was knitting this, um, I was really worried. I was like, man, did my gauge change um, as we were knitting this sweater? Like, especially when I was, I had knit the back so like the construction of a drop shoulder is you knit the back like rectangle trapezoid piece and then you connect along these um, shoulder seams and knit over on both sides and then you connect in the front where the neck is and then you finish knitting the front panel connected to the back under the arm holes and then knit the body and then pick up and knit for the sleeve. That's like a pretty classic drop shoulder construction method. So as I was knitting, well I knit the back and I was like fine this looks like the size of my back. <laughs> We're good with that. As I was knitting the front and it said to join here, I was like this neckline is very small. This neck hole for my head is very small and I was like really worried that it wasn't gonna fit and that maybe my row gauge was off maybe something was wrong um, I kept going and I connected under the arms and then I tried it on and I was like it fits it's fine um, I was a little worried about the size of the arm here and so what I ended up doing I don't know if you can see, is I ended up adding 10 stitches here under the arm. Um, so it looks like kind of funny, like a drop shoulder, right? You have all these sleeves stitches picked up and then right underneath it's like, oh, but it keeps going right here. <laughs> That's not very typical of a drop shoulder sweater. Um, I think you will really only notice that if you're a knitter and like you know these things. Um, I don't think very often people are just going to be like looking at my armpit and being like, this looks funny. <laughs> so I'm like not worried about it. I don't really care. Um, and you know, I'm actually glad that I added those stitches because uh, of my like arm circumference right here on my bicep. Um, you can see it's like tight, like there's no... It's not baggy, 
like if you remember the Oslo sweater like the sleeves are a little bit baggy it's like tight here and then it gets baggy like by the elbow and that's when you start to do sleeve decreases which you can kind of see the line right here down to the cuff um, I followed this part of the pattern exactly to the pattern the only difference was I ended up picking up like two extra stitches I thought it would be more um, but the pattern instructions for picking up stitches say to pick up it says like about every two to three stitches so it's like you pick up one you pick up one you skip one you pick up one pick up one skip skip one um, and I did that like all the way around like it said and then I was like I should have like 10 extra like five to ten extra stitches here and I don't so that must not have been like exact every two to three stitches which is fine I ended up picking up like two additional stitches to what it said in the pattern and I was like that's fine so I just decreased as normal and it's fine it was still an even number so for our twisted rib cuff uh, worked out great love the twisted rib yeah that was the main issue um so it fit at that point and then i decided to add on the extra stitches anyway and i was like now it fits really well now i'm like not worried about it being too small at all and i can take that stress from my mind about it not fitting and just keep going um, the only thing was when I had finished, I finished the body, then I did both sleeves, and then I came to the neckline. I'll tuck my little necklace in there. Um, and it recommends you do two inches of twisted rib here on the neck. Oh, I'm getting that, like, choky feeling. Just because I'm, like, touching it a lot. Um... And because the neck, like, the neck did open a little bit, you can kind of see, like, on the sides at least, when I added the sleeves, it pulled it open a little bit, which was nice. Um, but still in the front, it was still a little, like, close. So it recommended two inches. I only did one. Um, and I think it's fine. I think it looks great. So... That's that. The other thing, um, I'll put the photo, is it has a split hem detail on the bottom here, um, which is super cute. I had never done a split hem before, so I'm really glad I did it. The only thing, and I think I mentioned this in the last episode, is you're doing twisted rib, and you're doing twisted rib flat, which means you uh, knit through the back loop, and then you purl normally on one side, and then on the other side, you knit regularly, and then you have to purl through the back loop. And purling through the back loop is just annoying. It's just like not... <laughs> not the most fun knitting stitch but honestly I got used to it and then the hem was over and then I got to the sleeve cuffs and I was like this is great I only need to knit through the back loop um, and purl regularly so I was really happy about that um, and that is the construction journey of the sweater so I think I Let's, let me see, look, let me look at the notes. I've mentioned, so I did take some notes as I was like knitting this of like things that bothered me or mostly things that bothered me just so I could rem remember to talk about them. Um, I do think I mentioned some of these in previous podcasts, but I will mention them again because maybe you didn't watch those and you just came for the finished object review. So, um... The back panel and the like front parts here um, are knit with short row increases using German short rows. Puppy water break. And I was very confused about <laughs> using short row shaping uh, to do these increases. Now, it turned out completely fine like this is what always happens to me is I will look at the instructions and be like this is not how I'm used to doing things and then I'll like freak out and be like are we sure this is gonna work and then I just do the what the instructions say and it works out fine so 
<laughs> it's fine guys um and also in i like went to read a couple more like descriptions of other patterns that are drop shoulder and it's not uncommon to use short row shaping and german short rows for these increases on drop shoulder sweaters so just because it was my first time doing it doesn't mean it was like a new concept in the world of drop shoulder sweaters um but i have a lot of like question mark question mark question mark in my notes and i wrote i don't get it but turns out i do get it it was fine it worked um there is a lot of yarn breaking in this pattern where you like do a section and then you break the yarn and then you do another section and then you break the yarn and there's another part where you are like picking up stitches using the yarn tail and that was like really weird to me at first but it worked out just make sure you estimate <laughs> enough length for that tail um otherwise you'll have to do it multiple times oh here's the note somehow my gauge is 24 stitches instead of 22 stitches and i'm really sad about it okay if the camera is at a slightly different angle buddy has knocked into it three times <laughs> this note somehow my gauge is 24 stitches instead of 22 stitches and i'm really sad about it Thinking back now, I think I may have had slightly different gauge in the flat sections compared to the in the round sections because the whole, like, I also didn't block my swatch, like I mentioned. So the, like, finished, the finished gauge ended up being exact on at 22 stitches, which is what, is that, that's what the pattern called for? Yeah, 22 stitches per 4 inches. So, it ended up fine, and it must have just been, like, my row gauge that was off here. Okay. I made the mistake of not knitting the back panel long enough. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I knit it to, like, 5 inches. Like, at some point, the pattern says, like, knit 5 inches. Or, it actually says, knit 7 inches, and I knit 5 inches. <laughs> so... Um, luckily I figured it out before we joined in the round because I was like, this doesn't look like it's going to line up and I was correct because I did not knit it long enough and that was totally my error and it was very fixable. So we fixed that. I didn't feel like the armholes would be big enough so I added 10 stitches under the arms. I'll have to figure out if I want to keep the width the whole way or if I want to decrease down. That was a great note that I should have looked at when I started knitting the body. Um, I do think it would have been cute if I had decreased the stitches going down the body and done a little bit of waist shaping. And I did think about that when I was like two inches away from the hem. And I was like, well, it's too late now. Um, and I actually think the like square boxy look, it works and it's cute and I'm happy with it. And I'm fine that I did not do the waist shaping, but it would have been an option. Uh, the neck still feels incredibly small, though it fits over my head, so maybe it's a gauge thing? I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've mentioned that like five times now. Um, the body fits. I'm glad I, I, I added 10 extra stitches under the arm. Turns out that the 10 extra stitches like really didn't matter for the body, but they did really matter for the sleeves, so I am glad that I did that. I could have done waist shaping, but I totally forgot about that. And, oh, adding an extra inch on the body. Worried about having enough yarn for full sleeves. Um, you know, it really must have been a, um, a row gauge thing because I knit the body from the underarm to the end to the measurement it said in the pattern. Um, and then I measured, like, and then I knitted an, an extra inch, and then at the end I measured, like, you know, from here to the bottom, from here to the bottom, and it ended up being exactly what was in the schematic. So I needed that extra inch in order to meet what was in the schematic. So definitely a row gauge issue. I don't normally check my row gauge, um, which would explain... <laughs> all of this and that's why I can't tell you what it is because I didn't check it so something to note for future me okay 
Um, are the German short rows noticeable? Honestly, I don't think so. I'm trying to see. You can't really see them. I'm trying to like feel them. I don't think they are. Um, I saw I saw some people on Instagram talking about German short rows and how like it was they're great if you pair like a uh, regular merino yarn with a mohair or something fuzzy because the mohair fuzz like masks that turn stitch in the German short rows um, but I so I wanted to check and honestly I forgot but you did some German short rows I think over here and you like can't really see them so either I did mine really tight and <laughs> they're not noticeable or like it was fine in this pattern with this yarn okay now we're actually getting to the like comparison questions that I'm asking myself for each sweater so did the sweater come out the same or close to pattern specs slash measurements yes it did um, unblocked the width of the sweater was one inch smaller so it ended up being 49 inches across around um, whereas the pattern for this size says 50 inches then I blocked it after blocking it actually ended up being 51 inches now remember how I added 10 stitches on both sides there is that extra one inch so in the body again didn't need those extra stitches but again I'm really glad I did them for the sleeves so um, the length before blocking was just a pattern and the length after blocking basically did not change so blocking this really stretched out width wise compared to lengthwise um, which I didn't do like I did not pin this out when I washed and blocked it I literally just like washed it it was wet I laid it out and just like padded it so that it would be flat on the blocking mats um, I did do like a quick measure of both the width and the length I tried to lengthen it out like a little bit but I really didn't think it needed extra length um, it was already to the pattern and when I had tried it on before blocking I was really happy with the length that it was at um, it is like slightly cropped I would say but I knit it so that the back sits like right above my booty and I have kind of a larger booty so I don't really like when sweaters go over my butt because it just makes like the sweater look bigger it makes my butt look bigger so I really like the length this is at I think it ends at a great point both in the front and with in the back um, so I was fine with that do you like the amount of ease? Yes, I do. This ended up being 11 inches of positive ease. Um, I was worried after I had knit the Oslo sweater. The Oslo sweater turned out to be 10 inches of positive ease. I was worried that anything more than that I would not like. Um, and this is 11 inches and I do like it. Now, that is only one additional inch, so maybe... You know, I think we're, we're towing a fine line here. Like, anything more? I don't know. I would have to like make it or try it on and then decide if I like like it. It's the same with everything, right? <laughs> Um, how was reading the pattern? Uh, for me, like as an experienced sweater knitter, I found the pattern to be easy to read. There, it was nicely written, it had a good amount of detail, there weren't any parts in the pattern where I was like, I don't know what these words mean. Um, there were abbreviations and like a key listed out as to what those abbreviations mean. Um, there were a couple, I think there were a couple stitches where it had like a like the name of a stitch and then she wrote it out as to like how to actually do that stitch which is pretty common so um, I thought it was a well written pattern were there any tricky parts in the pattern um, for me it was the short row shaping which I've done short rows on like 
in the round in raglan sweaters. So it wasn't necessarily doing the German short rows. It was the fact that I did not expect to, to do German short rows in this <laughs> pattern, but we got over it and it was fine and it worked. Um, and again, there was a lot of yarn breaking, which isn't my favorite. Um, and that's not necessarily tricky, but it does mean that you're picking up a lot of stitches. I do feel like I'm getting way better at picking up stitches since doing a lot of drop shoulders. Um, but it's not my favorite thing to do. I guess I would prefer to, <laughs> I would prefer to pick up stitches than to purl through the back loop. So <laughs> there's a hot take. Um, did you change anything from the pattern? Yes. I added those 10 extra stitches under the arms on both sides and again looking back not necessary but I'm not mad at it and I did not knit the collar to two inches per the pattern like we talked about I just did one inch there which those are really easy well at least this one is a really easy change to make like in the moment you can just say hey I like it where it's at I'm gonna stop it one inch instead of two the underarms like I really had to think about it and think like how much additional like width is this going to be adding am i okay with that you have to do that sort of math and thinking um is this beginner friendly so i talked about in the oslo sweater it was like a yes and no answer and i would say the same thing for this clove sweater like yes and no um, again, I would not recommend a drop shoulder as the first sweater that someone is going to knit if they are a either a beginning knitter or they've never knit a sweater before. I would recommend a raglan. I think they're easier to understand um, and they're easier to knit. Now, if you have never knit a drop shoulder sweater before, I do think you could do this as your first one. However, we, we are comparing here, and I probably would at this point recommend the Oslo sweater above the clove sweater in terms of like beginner friendliness. Do you like your yarn choice in general? Yes, I do. This is Explorer Knits, Rocky's Decay in Barrel Age Sour. Um, I think in this sweater, both, it works really well. Um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's really soft. Um, the drape has gotten way better with blocking. Um, it's, it's blocked beautifully. So yes, I'm really happy with this. Um, the pattern recommends using Cardiff Cashmere DK, which is a very expensive yarn. I've never felt it. I've never worked with it. Um, I have used like a lot of cashmere blends that indie dyers like sell, like um, Explorer Knits has a fingering cashmere blend that I have used and am currently using. Um, so Rally Yarn has a cashmere blend as well. Um, and I love it. Cashmere is very soft. I love using cashmere. Um, but this Cardiff cashmere specifically is I think it's different than the blend that like the indie dyers use and um, it's a little bit more pricey so I was not able slash didn't want to go with that and I already had this yarn in my stash and I knew that I wanted to use it for this so happy with that. Wearability, like how often do you think you're going to reach for this garment and wear it? Um, high, high wearability for this. Um, it's been, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's been four days since I blocked this and I think I have at least put it on my body every day <laughs> since then. Um, I'm really happy with it and it's been like chilly in the house and cold outside here in Southern California, which very, very happy about. Um, and it gives me a chance to wear my sweaters. So it's really now a toss up as to whether or not I'm going to grab this one or I'm going to grab the Oslo sweater. I love them both. So I'm really happy with them. Were the yarn measurements accurate? Mm, this is the big question. Um, the pattern for this size, the size large, recommends um, 1380 yards of DK. I purchased 
1370 yards of DK. So I was 10 yards short of what the pattern recommended. And that's why I was so worried that I was going to run out of yarn. Um, that's why when I swatched, I ripped them out and I did not keep the swatches. That's why I only did like mini swatches to begin with. I was like, I can't waste any of this yarn um, with cutting it and like messing it up. Um, and I ended up with this is how much I ended up with left over. This is 33 grams or 90 yards. This is a one third of a skein left over. So I definitely could have used this to swatch. Like if I had kept, I probably could have done the two swatches both in 4.5 millimeter and four millimeter needles and I would have been fine. But if I had done that, I would have been playing some serious yarn chicken at the end. Um, and I'm really glad that I didn't have to do that. So now I just have a third of a skein and when I ever decide to do some sort of scrappy projects, this can go right in it. So yes, um, yarn or sorry, pattern designers build in like extra yarn for swatching, for making mistakes, for having to rip things out. Um, and so I would say that the uh, yarn measurements in the pattern were accurate, yes. Is this pattern size inclusive? I'm happy to say yes it is. Uh, this pattern is sized from 34 inches to 70 inches um, as the final garment measurements. And so that's like built in the six to 10 inches of positive ease that are recommended in the pattern. So I'm really happy to say yes it is size inclusive. How much time did you spend on this? I cast this on on October 30th and I bound off and blocked on November 28th. So that's four weeks, um, almost exactly there. And my goal was to finish this in November, which I did. So I'm really happy about that. And last but not least, was this an enjoyable experience? I'm gonna have to say yes or no, yes and no. Um, at the beginning, I was really stressed that it was going to be too small, but at the end slash in the middle when I like added the extra stitches, tried it on, and realized that yeah, it does fit, then I was happy. I was like smooth sailing from there. So, and I think we all go through that, right? I think some, we all have this like phase of in any of our projects where we're like, Either is this going to fit? Am I going to like it? What am I doing? I should have picked a different yarn. I should have picked a different needle. I should have picked a different pattern, blah, 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 blah. And then we finish it and we're like, this is the greatest thing I've ever made in my entire life. So, you know, we just went through that like for a little bit longer, I think, in this one at the beginning. But that's it. That's my 30 minute review of the clove sweater. Um, overall, I'm really happy with it, and I do think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. Um, and I think it fits really nicely into my wardrobe, um, which is an important part in this. I typically wear my sweaters like this just with jeans, um, and so I know for work I can wear this with my black jeans, and it'll be super cute, it'll keep me super warm in our freezing cold office, so there we go. If you want to knit it, there is my recommendation. I would recommend it if that, like, two thumbs up <laughs> overall. Um, just check your gauge. That's really what it com comes down to. And check your row gauge. Because I did, oh, here's the other thing. I know, I said, this is the end and then I'm gonna keep going. Um, when I was, like, really worried about this, like, part, it's really this measurement from where you join the back, which is like right here, to here, where you join in the round. So it's like this much. And I went on Ravelry and I looked at all of the photos from like testers and everyone who's made this sweater. And I was like, is theirs as short as mine is? And a lot of them were not. And I was thinking at first like, did I read the pattern wrong? Like, is it supposed to be an increase row and then a regular row and then increase and then regular? Um, and it, it's not. I read the pattern right. Um, again, just row gauge. So I know gauge swatching sucks and 
thinking about all these things is not super fun when you just like have that creative urge to start making but sometimes it'll help you out so all right that's what I have to say about that um let's move on to my works in progress I have a new cast on that I did a proper gauge swatch for you might add have I measured the row gauge in this yet no I have not but I did measure stitch gauge and it's perfect so please meet our new gauge swatch for our new sweater this is Explore Knits Cashmere Caverns Sock in the colorway Fia from her Ireland collection. It's this beautiful cream base with these like blue green, purple pink, um, some like beigey speckles. And it is um, sock yarn, so the fingering weight held double for kind of like a DK weight. Um, and it's so soft. I wish you could feel this. It's so soft and it's so like softly variegated and it's really pretty. I'm like really excited about this. Um, and this is my swatch for the Dear Duomo sweater by Sanghi Knits. And again, real excited about it. So I cast it on and, um, another exciting thing. I'm keeping it in my Black Pearl Magic bag. Yay! I finally get to use this. I love it. I pull it up on the bed like every day when I'm working on it and I'm like, mm -hmm, look at me. Um, I just stuck all of my skeins of yarn in here. I have like six skeins of this. Um, I caked up two of them to start. I don't, I don't like to cake up all my yarn at once because I like don't really enjoy winding yarn so I only do it when I need to but we got two cakes you want to see what it looks like in the cake I love those like diamonds I love the little like I don't know these are kind of like windows into the yarn I just think it's so pretty um and here's what we have so far it's it's not much but oh I forgot to mention this is a bottom up sweater so you cast on the ribbing at the bottom and you're gonna knit up in the round and then you're gonna split to do the front panel and then the back panel and then you're gonna join in the shoulders and then you'll pick up sleeves and pick up your neckline so I I'll be honest I was hesitant to let me show you. Let me just show you before I get into it. Here's my... Here it is. I was hesitant to knit a bottom-up sweater because... I think it's just not like the preferred construction method for a lot of people um, and for me as well. I think it's a lot easier to knit top-down. It just makes it a lot easier to try things on and like make changes as you go. But I have heard nothing but rave reviews about this sweater. Um, and I needed to try it for myself. I, it's also knit, like one of the samples is knit in Explore Knits Cashmere Caverns sock held double um, in her Dear Duomo colorway. And this Fia is like I think similar similar vibes similar in color and tone it's like a cream with like speckles of different colors um similar to the dear duomo so that's why i picked this i thought it would be perfect um and okay it starts you start this with let's see can you see this look at the cast on this is a rib cable cast on it's very stretchy so i'm like not worried about that at all which is great um but this was a new experience for me i had never done any sort of cable cast on let alone a rib cable cast on and look i was new i'm just gonna have it sit on my shoulder here 
I was new to this so with anything new it took me a couple tries and I was frustrated um, and it took me like all day to cast this on <laughs> on what was this Thursday I was working from home and like in between emails and in between meetings I just feel like all right I gotta cast on a few more stitches um, but because it's ribbed you do like a pearl cable or a knit cable cast on and then a pearl cable cast on um, but once I got used to it, like, it was fine. Um, I think it is a little bit more time consuming compared to, like, a regular long tail cast on, but it looks great. I think it looks really similar to, like, a tubular or Italian, like, sewn bind off, um, which I really like the look of it. Um, and it's stretchy in the same way, which you definitely want for the bottom hem of your sweaters. So, overall I'm really happy with it. Um, I need to get to 8 centimeters, which is like 3.25 inches. And I think I'm a little over halfway. I've got my row counter on here. I do, I swear to God, I use these on every single project. Um... And let's see, I have 10 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 15 more rows left. Um, I can tell because what I do is I use this, this removable one and I count this in like 10 increments. So when I um, went back, moved my marker back to the number 1, I moved this up this counter to the two so I have 20 more rows and now from those 20 I have already knit five one two three four five and I'm on row six so that means I have 15 left to go and it's one by one rib which like I guess at least it's not twisted rib I think one by one regular rib goes a little bit faster for me but one by one ribbing is not my favorite so <laughs> whatever um, this pattern also does have a really interesting detail which you can't really see in the ribbing but in the stock net it will be more um, obvious but there's a, a faux pearl seam that goes up both sides of the body and there are instructions in the pattern that say like you can leave it as just like what's my hair doing you can leave it as just like a, f a pearl ridge like down the side or you can actually like mattress seam the stitches so that it creates this like little bump. Um, I mean on the inside it would be like a knit stitch on the inside which just like gives the fabric on the sides more structure um, which I have never done something like this before so I'm really intrigued to see how it works up how it feels um, I've talked to people who have done both they have knitted they have seamed it up and someone who has not seamed it up um, and they both like their decision so I don't know what I'm gonna choose um, but it's going really well so far. My my stretch goal is to finish this by Christmas so that I can wear it as my Christmas sweater, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, I would like to finish this by December 31st so that I can say that I finished it in December. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but that would make me happy. Um, again, I'm trying to finish like one sweater a month. I finished the Oslo in October, the Clove in November. I would like to finish the Dear Duomo in December. I cast this on on December 1st, so we can see if I can get it done in 31 days. Um, I, did, I did the Clove sweater in that amount of time, but I do need to finish two Oslo hats still before Christmas. I really need to work on that. I really need to work on that. Um, I just have so many other things that I would like rather do <laughs> at this point. I've knit two Oslo hats, two and a half, and I love the pattern still. I just like want to be done. But anyways, um, that's that. So that is my Dear Duomo sweater. So expect to see more progress going forward on that. Yay. Okay, this one is my champagne cardigan. 
I have not worked on this at all since the last podcast. Um, this is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I don't really have anything else to say to you about that. Oh, I think this was like two podcasts ago. I think I was there. It's like two rows. <laughs> um, I would like to work on this, but um, again, I, I have other stuff that I need to finish first. So that's what's happening with that. And then my Oslo hat that I have been working on, let's see, I'm pretty sure, oh, I thought I had a marker on this. I might have had to take it off. Yeah. Anyways, here's where I am. I have uh, 20, oh, sorry, um, 16 Oh, 15. I have 15 more rows on this as well until I can fold the brim. And this one is actually going to be for um, Caleb's stepsister. I'm kind of just like looking at the size of this brim. I'm wondering if I, because I've been wanting to like test out and see if I can make the Oslo hat with one skein of yarn. Now I did already like cake up two skeins, but if I have 100 grams left over, then I've only used one skein of yarn. So I'm considering te doing my test on this one. I think this is at like, honestly, I think this is at a good length now. Like she's, she's eight, um, but she's got a pretty big head. She's like, um, pretty big for her age. Just tall wise um and so i think this could work let me see let me compare this to the size of this one this is my oslo hat in woodruff by explore knits that i absolutely love and wear all the time if i folded this now let's see I don't know if I can do this while looking and look at the viewfinder. Um, there we go. So this is like 15, I had 15 more rows to do. Honestly, I might need to measure this again. Okay, it's like not that much of a difference. You see that? That's probably like, what, a centimeter? I think I'm gonna stop it now and just do the fold. And I think it'll be fine. Um, this is one of my thoughts to like, how to make the Oslo hat with one skein of yarn. I think if you, if your head is like, slightly small for like an adult, um, if you cast on like four fewer stitches, which I should have done for this one, but I didn't. It's okay. I think that plus knitting the brim just like an inch shorter, um, which I really like, you can already see this is like 15 rows and the difference is not that much. So like an inch shorter and then knitting the crown here also just like a little like half an inch to an inch shorter I think it might work let me see I have a relatively small head um, so like see there's this much like space on top um, that like technically like I don't know if I really need that I think if you have a bigger head yeah maybe you might need that but um, like I could probably do with like a slightly shorter one and it might have like been one skein of yarn so I'm gonna do that we're gonna test this out and I will take notes and I will get back with you guys on this um, but anyways that's the progress on my Oslo hat here okay that's all my knitting I want to take a water break everyone hydrate now this really cute cup from 
Amazon is this like SM I don't know oh simple modern 24 ounce classic and isn't it just so pretty love it not sponsored or anything <laughs> um, okay oh crap I do have one more knitting thing to show you I'm probably gonna rip it out uh, oh man there's dog hair all over it but e I cast on a sock I'm not liking it so far um, but I have this really really fun like holiday themed sock yarn and everybody on Instagram was participating in Sockmas and the Andrea Mowry knit along and I was like oh, I really want to make socks so honestly I tried to cast these on for like two nights in a row I think I cast these on like four times and I don't know I'm just like not confident in my sock knitting yet and I think that's really what it comes down to I overthink everything I like read through like eight different patterns before I finally decide on one and like this I didn't even decide on one I was just like oh, I'm just gonna do a two by two cuff and then just like stocking it for the rest of the way blah 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 um I really worry about the cuffs not being stretchy enough um so I've kind of given myself two options to like maybe rip this out and then do that cable cast on that I just learned because that was really stretchy or um, I think if I switch these to knitting toe up then I can like try them on as I go I have like relatively like I was a dancer growing up so I have like big calves and my ankles are like a little bit bigger as well um, and so I'm always just worried that like because I've knit socks in the past where like they don't go up past a certain point on my leg and I'm like well this is dumb um so I don't know I need to at some point who knows if it'll be next year but like really take the time to like learn about my <laughs> leg and foot and the size of socks that I can make, what size needle that works, how many stitches that is. Basically like do the same thing that I'm doing with sweaters but with socks. Um, and I just like am not there yet. But I really wanted to, my like thought was I can cast these on and then knit them two at a time and then I won't have to like knit one and then the other which I never finished the second one so I thought it would work but I'm thinking of uh, starting over and just getting a white I've got like linen or something in here somewhere um, like a beige cream white to do the toes and the heels in and then doing toe up because the toes are kind of like the toes were easy for me so anyways that was my thought um I'll have the info in the description below uh, as to what yarn this is because I left the tag somewhere else and I don't remember. But I bought this from a D stash, so I didn't buy it like from a company, but yay. Um, I, I love the colors. I think they're super cute, but I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to work on these in December anymore because I've got a lot of stuff to do in December so once I finish my um the Oslo hat that I'm working on I need to cast on a, my second one for Caleb and oh Elise if Caleb's watching don't let him see this <laughs> I bought him his favorite color is yellow so he's getting yellow and that is all the knitting okay now we can move on to Advents. Okay. I would like to start with, let's start with the yarn one. So, Explore Knits, um, who, obviously this is like not an Explore Knits sponsored podcast, but, um, you know, here's that yarn in my other sweater and this now. But Explore Knits had 
a winter solstice countdown where you open one full skein of yarn every week leading up to the winter solstice and this week we got to start opening them on Wednesday November 30th and let me just show you what the packaging looks like these four really pretty boxes with kind of like this um, photo theme which honestly reminds me of A Court of Thorns and Roses if you've read that series. Doesn't it look like the mountain? The mountains? Anyway, so four yarns. Let's see if I can um, do something here. Is that cute? You can only see a couple of them, but that's fine. There we go. That's cute. Okay. And it also came with a candle from Wax and Wool. It's a small batch, hand poured soy candle. And it says Solstice 2022 is the like scent. Um, it smells really, really good. Kind of like foresty. I'm really bad at explaining scents, so <laughs> you have to trust me on this one. It smells really good. There's also a stitch marker in here that is from Hello Lavender, and I am not going to reveal this until the end in case somebody has not opened their stitch marker yet and they're waiting till the end. I, of course, opened mine right away. Um, and um, I want to share with you what the Quan is. Do you see that? Look at this. It's this really, really pretty green color that is like it's like a light forest green or like a light spruce green like I really want to compare it to something like this which is like a darker these are actually pretty close actually but like you can see this one's lighter versus this like darker forest green this one is from Red Door Fiber Studio my beloved um, but it's like a, a light foresty green is what I'm, um, calling it. And it's called Exordium, which I didn't know that this was a word. Um, I had never heard it before and I looked it up and it means like the beginning, um, which I think is super cute because this was the first skein that we opened. So I'm really happy with it. Um, my, like, thought, okay, I'll just come out and say it. I have opened all of them, okay? <laughs> I cannot control myself sometimes, so I have seen them, but you will not see them from me anywhere until it is time to open them. Um, my thought is to make, like, a color block or a striped sweater with these. Um, I got the Denali sock base, so it's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon. Um, yeah, that means though that I have to like knit a fingering weight sweater, which, blah. <laughs> I have realized recently, I guess in knitting like this, like in my drop shoulder and sweater comparison project, um, I think I prefer DK and I like just keep buying all this fingering weight yarn and I just want to like I'm looking for patterns and I'm like oh I can hold this double like what pattern has enough for me to hold this double and then I'm like if I'm gonna hold it double like I should have just bought DK but anyways it's fine <laughs> you know you have to learn things for yourself and you go through phases so anyway that was week one. I love it. It's pretty. Okay. Now. Okay. Today is December 3rd. So I can show you the first three boxes in our twice sheared sheep countdown. Um, I put the boxes back in here, but here's number one. Um, here is number two. And here is number three. And... Actually, please hold. I need to go get one of them. One of them isn't in the box. So day one was like the second biggest box here. 
And if you um, have maybe been paying attention to the background, um, you will have seen what was in day one already. Day one was this. Can you even see how fluffy this is? Okay, this is two skeins of Bellingor brand quality French Angora yarn. Um, it's choice 100% French Angora rabbit hair, 10 grams each, which is approximately 33 yards in the colorway baby blue. And everyone who I have seen open this picks it up and says, oh my god, this is the softest thing I have ever felt in my entire life. And it's true. It is extremely, extremely soft. This is softer than Surrey. This is softer than mohair. It's incredible. Um, and there, these two tiny, tiny 10 gram, 10 gram skeins um, balls. So this is about 20 grams. It's like a mini skein. Um, and you have 66 yards. I have an idea of what I'm going to make with this already. Um, I'm going to keep it a surprise because I think it's going to be really cute. Um, and yeah, this is like just what a way to start off an advent box. Um, Twice Your Cheap, as you know, is like knitting related tools. And so they did say that there was probably going to be at least one yarn in there. So we got it right away, which is really fun. Um, I have to keep these away from the dogs though, because they just want to like put their faces in them and then their nose gets it all wet. And I'm like, leave my Angora rabbit yarn alone please um so it's just been chilling right there day two i should have kept these in the boxes to open them for you um which number three is i think but i forgot i will next week this was day two this is a small notions tin with a wolf howling to the moon on it and you can see it just like opens up this is like the perfect size for some stitch markers maybe like a row counter i just brought a couple of these are some of my twice shared sheep stitch markers and you can throw them in toss it in your project bag and you're good to go um, these are really useful and really cute. So that was number two. And then I'm pretty sure my day three is still in here. If I can get it out. Yeah, it is. Did you see that reel I posted where I just shook all of the boxes? That was a really fun one. Okay. Come out. <gasps> It's a row counter. I'm really happy we got, they guaranteed at least one row counter in the box. And I'm really glad we got it so early on day three um, so that, you know, people who have never tried one before can try it. Um, it's, and it's a little raccoon. The theme of this advent box is woodland forest. So, that's why everything is like forest themed, but I just think it's really pretty with the gold, the raccoon. This is a size medium, so it'll work for um, needle or hook size up to a US 8, which, what is that, like a 5 millimeter, I think? Um, but yeah, see this would be, let me see if I can... I don't have scissors over here, but this, really perfect and easy to drop in your little tin. And there you go. You got your stitch markers. You got your row counters. It's perfect. It's perfect. Um, okay, so that was day three. Next week, we will get to open four, five, six. 
seven. Where's eight? Eight, nine, and I think that's it. If the podcast comes out on Friday, right? Four, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So six more. Four, five, six, no, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, up through nine, up through nine. So come back and look forward to that. This has been super fun. So I'm really, really excited that I get to share this with you. Um, I should have mentioned this before, but this box was gifted to me by Twice Your Jeep um, as an affiliate for them. Um, which means if you, you know, are interested in any Twice Shared Sheet products and you click on the link that's in the description below um, and you make a purchase from there, I do get a small commission. Um, it, like, honestly makes me so happy when I get a sale like this because I'm just really glad that I can show you these tools that I genuinely use on every project. Um, and that you want to try them out for yourselves and that you are supporting me by clicking that link and purchasing through that link. I know it's very easy for you, you can just go to like twiceyourcheap.com um, but if you actually click on the link it like really helps me and I really appreciate it so thank you. If you are sad that you missed out on an advent box and you're thinking to yourself, man I would love one for next year, you can sign yourself up for the email newsletter that Twice Shared Sheep has. Um, you can also, if you log into the website and create an account, you can add it to your wish list for next year um, and you can get, you know, email reminders for when they go on sale. Additionally, um, Twice Shared Sheep announced last week that they are doing something special next year. So next year they are putting together three surprise boxes throughout the year. So one in March, one in June, one in September. Um, if you got or remember the um, Mother's Day box from last year, it's going to be similar to that. So there's going to be, I think, eight full-size products in each box. Um, and it's like an extra surprise throughout the year. You don't have to wait for next Christmas to get an advent box. Um, you can get one throughout the year. So that's really, really exciting. Again, I will put the link for that in the description box down below as well um, if you are interested in signing up for that it's like a surprise box subscription. Um, on the website, there's like a whole bunch more information as to like what you can expect, what will be included, um, those types of things. I know that like for every collection that they do, all the like images are like only available in that collection. So if it's a theme that you're interested in, I think like the summertime one is like summertime themed. I, don't know, I should have looked. <laughs> Um, but like if you're interested in like summery things and like that's a great one um, The March one is spring the September one is fall related so They're gonna be they're gonna be great um, Okay, the final thing that I want to show you I'm like not really gonna show you but I got my Woolberry Fiber Co um, Winter solstice box as well I thought this was a countdown and it turns out it's not. It's just supposed to be something fun for you to open all at one time on a day that is special to you. Whether that's the winter solstice or Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or any holiday that you might celebrate. Um, so I am not going to share that until the end. Anyways, I'm not going to share that until... <laughs> until the end of December. Um, if somebody is waiting for, you know, their holiday in order to open that, um, I don't want to spoil that for them. So, um, I think that's everything. This has been an incredibly long podcast. Um, I did have, I did share some things and like save some things on Instagram this week, um, but I will save those for next week as we've already talked through a lot today. I just want to say thank you for watching. I am still trying to reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, 
we are slowly inching our way up there but if you would share like comment subscribe um this podcast would that would be truly appreciated on my end so We've got a dog battle happening in the background now. That's my cue to end it. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye. Lip up. I'm busy. Can you go lay down? Oh no, we've got another. The dogs have come. Hey, buddy. Where do you get to come, bud? Hi. Time to be real, too, guys. Come here, bunny. We're in the middle of a podcast here. Can you go lay down? Oh, okay. Wow, bud. You really had to do that to me. That's a big stretch, Mindy. Where are you gonna go? Don't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Buddy, can you go lay down? Go. Go lay down. Good oh boy. Are you gonna go in there? You can go. Go lay down. Both of you, please. Buddy!